and I'm delighted to welcome uh, Pamela Hussey here uh, from our Centre for uh, E-Integrated Healthcare and Pam's uh, presentation today is on the revision of ISO 13940 systems of, of concepts for continuity of care to progress integrated care, which we'll all agree is hugely important in, in community health care. Okay, so thanks Mayan. So we've, we've had policy from Sabina and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about research. Mm -hmm. uh, research that we do about 9pm at night because we talk to Australia and Canada and that's the only time we can get them all online. <coughs> so uh, this is a, a labour of love, what we do. Um, and I think I love standards because basically they shape everything. So one of the things we need to understand is that we need to be involved in the development of standards. And sadly not a lot of nurses or healthcare community workers are involved. So this standard I'm going to talk to you about today was developed by a GP in France in 2008 and a lot of the technical people who were involved in this standard went, were not involved in the standard but were involved in, in using the standard said well this doesn't make any sense to us. So I thought that was quite funny because it made huge sense to me as a standards person but then I had 20 years of clinical practice underneath my belt and that was probably why. So I'm going to try and demystify this one just a little bit and explain to you why I'm passionate about it and why it's so important. We have a couple of things from the centre on today. Um, this is one in Claire and, and Katrina's other work will be presented as well. But do feel free to stop me at any point if you need to. So, this standard, I've been working on it for probably 12 years on and off. It's an international and European standard. It was originally published in 2015 and the ISO community are now revising the standard. Okay? Um, CIC is working on one of the working groups, in fact we're leading one of the working groups and I'll explain to you why. It's all about looking at how continuity of care can be used to support information systems and facilitate integration of information and data from one to many users. So if we take Colette's presentation this morning, we were talking about health and climate, but what I'm saying is that if the AI policy that was published last summer was saying that health and climate are our focus, how do we link the data? Because that's really important. So this is what this standard is about and what the un infrastructure that we're using to build the standard is about. So we're under a vision. We have a two to three year timeline. ISO are quite strict on that. And we're into the finishing just the first year of, of our work. There's no point in me having a conversation with me about this if I don't explain to you what an ontology is in computer science terms. So I'm just going to explain that to you in, in simple terms. So when you talk about our hospital information systems or our community systems, they're all built on databases, and those databases might be an SQL database, or you might hear them talk about an Oracle database. And then when we start talking about whether or not the person who's impacted on by the system is actually going to be able to share their data or access their data, Kale Supreze, we find it's fragmented. In fact, Ireland is probably lagging behind every other country in Europe in relation to linked data. So, what's wrong? Now let's go to your life, your life at home, your life outside of work. And ultimately at the end of the day, you turn your key and you, put the ca and you start your car and sometimes your phone will say it's 20 minutes to work. Anybody have that happen on their uh, Apple phone? No? Maybe not. You turn on your Netflix to look at stranger things and it'll say if you liked this, you like this one as well. Mm -hmm. What's happening in the background is Google is linking your data. Okay, all the data is linked. Now, we're not going to talk about all the negative issues and the ethical issues, which there are <laughs> phenomenal amounts, okay, because I'm, I'm on the side of actually ethics and trust. But we do have to recognise that in, <coughs> the ter in the terms of the 21st century, our technology and our systems use linked data. So semantic web standards are the future. And in every country, or every one of our services in Ireland, or 99% of them, with the exception of some pockets of brilliance, all of our databases are in the last century. None of them are built in data. Okay? So it's a formal way, an ontology is a formal way to define the language and the structure of the knowledge represented for the various domains, so nursing, community services. It's also designed to actually capture really complex information about groups of things and relations between things. That's important. It's very important if I'm a citizen in a country looking to try and connect my information. I may be pregnant, I may have a chest infection, and I may suffer from migraine, and I'm seeing three separate specialists. And the only person who's really actually looking at me from an holistic perspective is my GP, and hopefully my primary care service. All right? 
we need to link the data in it's in in a, in and, and I represent the complexity of the data um, about the relations between these things. Okay, we are funded in this particular project by Adapt, but we are as a centre working with three SFI research centres, and our expertise is around interoperability or integrated care. Okay. If you're going to build an ontology, you need to use web ontology language. That's basically just a fancy way to say the programming language that is, is used and based on. Okay? You can use Protégé as well and Karma, and they're the ones that we're using for those of you who might be interested in the technology piece. I'll stop there for the technology piece. So, this was the original work we did in 2010. We had business people from Sweden on board looking at clinical process with a really structured, acute model head on them. Okay, and then we started to build these concepts. And these are all the concepts that are in the standard. And these are all the relationships, but they're um, abstract relationships. Okay, this is an example of a healthcare actor and a subject of care. All right, so we're not happy in ISO. We want to change this. Social model wasn't included, so this new revision is very much focused on improving consists and bringing in a social model. Okay? So what did we do? Well, Savashis isn't here. He's in India at the moment on holidays. But Savashis works with us. And Savashis has built this into this. Okay? Might not look any different to you guys. Mm. But trust me, it's actually a formal ontology. And that's where you can access it. Okay? The link is there. All right? What's happening here is these are formalized relationships now between those concepts that are built into that standard that originally was written in 2008, and between 2008 and 2015. And what we're doing now is we're testing it against social models. And we have three working groups, of which we are one, and we're building the ontology piece. Okay, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this now in terms of how it works. The 2020, 21, 22 standards that are being published around in health information and so health and social information, they stress the need. If we're going forward with AI and ML, we must have use cases. So all of you in here are capable of writing a use case. Katrina Murphy's not here, but Katrina wrote a use case last year on activities of daily living. I don't know whether Claire is referencing it or not in her, in her, in her presentation, but we can all do it. And a use case is actually just deciding what the functions and the roles <coughs> are and what the information is that you would need for your piece. It could be a referral could be a discharge plan for your piece to be brought into and understood and interpreted by linked data using an ontology. All right? This is important because in the NHS at the moment, they have spent billions, billions on their national program for IT. Now, the lead of the NHS digital is on our working group, and we have had lots of discussions. So what's happening is, and, and this is really for to be brought home to uh, all of you, if you start with just one organisation and you design the system completely for that organisation, the chances are you'll have common core concepts, but you'll also have context-specific concepts. And if they're not written in linked data for the semantic web, then they can't be shared in any shape or form in the future. If they're written for a database for a specific organisation. Then we get vendor lock-in. <laughs> okay? The vendors then own the system, and if you want something, oh no, that'll cost you a bit. That will be a new form there that will cost you. We've got to move away from that. Just look at how the semantic web links everything together in a positive and a negative way. All right? So our draft technical report is going to look at de developing these use cases from different domains and looking on how these new models of care like Slauncher Care and others can be moved forward. We are also an ICNP centre. And Kira White is, is leading out from September on our ICNP centre. Why is that important? The International Classification for Nursing Practice is a WHO-related classification. It's linked as a family member to ICD and also ICF. All right? ICNP is built as an ontology. It's also linked to a thing called SNOMED. So we know that we're now dealing with like is like, and standards are underpinning it. So that's why we've moved these two together. All right? And we hope that by doing that, that we can create new knowledge with examples of standards harmonization. EU is spending a huge amount on ISO on standard harmonisation. They're having this new open data piece, okay, that they've called, um, and it's all available on the internet if you want to have a look at it. Yeah. The only problem with that is that we have to make sure that it's citizen-centred and rises from the bottom as well as the top, okay. Otherwise, we end up back in vendor locking land again. So, from a shag perspective, <coughs> so what? What in God's name has this got to do with me? This is all about technology. It's over there. It's 
hard science STEM, I don't really care about that stuff. I work every day with drug users or people who are homeless or people who need you know, assistance in the home. CONS is important because it's a biopsychosocial model of care that it's underpinned by. It was written originally by a GP and a physio. It wasn't written by a technologist. It's designed and is using key concepts which we were involved in from 2010. So look at these, look at these words. These words were selected and picked deliberately. There is a concept called, I have a health concern. I have a health need. I have a health issue. I don't want to see a diagnosis here. I want to see a health issue because it broadens the social, biosocial model that we're working on. And if we go back to Colette's presentation this morning, what did we learn? We learned that things are linking up across the health and climate environment. What health issues and health issue threads are we going to have to deal with in terms of environment going forward? Okay? And then obviously care plan, which we know about. The second thing I'd say to you is that we also have embedded within this, and believe me, I'm shouting and roaring at 9 o'clock at night with my asset conversion to the guy in Australia. <laughs> we have a temporal dimension on this. What that means is it's not a one-size-fits-all episode of care that we're going to just throw out in a yellow pack way. We are looking at clustering the information for linked data across the time dimension. So we look at, not, I won't say cradle to grave because it's overused, but we're looking at somebody who may be early diagnosis of dementia and how they're going to manage their care over a five to seven year period. And how can we bring that into an episode of care bundle that makes sense through the lens of linking the data under a diagnostic pattern maybe of dementia or homelessness or something else, okay? So this is our initial use case development. This is the one I've written just in May. <coughs> These are what we're looking at, role-based views and functional views. These are important. When we start talking about a use case, we need to identify those pieces. Because if they're not well-defined, then we're dealing with abstracts again, and we're back to square one. This is what we did last year with the, the, the nurses in our undergraduate program. And again, this is actually where we had a fall incident. In, so basically an app was created and our students in, in, inputted data on it. We were working with St. Michael's House. We had a fall. We have a nurse on call engaged. Then we had a bed prescription and nurse referral put in. You can see these references. <coughs> now, it looks a bit weird to you because you're not used to looking at reports like this. But in ontology, it's dynamic. So you create them on the fly. You can actually basically manipulate that and add in whatever you want once you have the ontology done. And that's how Google works. That's how Google knows that you want to get a new shed and it comes up on Facebook. Okay? They make these associations. They're, it's so powerful, but health, of course, is the last bastion because it's so sensitive. And that is why, you know, that's just an example of the virtual. Uh, you'll hear people talking about virtual views and how we can do things virtually um, with, with, with that. And that's it. I think I've stayed within my 15 minutes. As I said, the centre is there and other work we're doing is available to look at and we're, we're part of the school and the faculty. Thank you.